We're back again on 3 and Out. I'm Ryan Orlovsky with Brian Carter. For the last time, we'll read our fan emails on the seventh inning stretch. You can still email us at 3 Sports at gmail.com if you'd like a free pen. Getting to the emails. First one's from Trent. Go All ahead, right. Brian. From Trent. Guys, what is your thought on the Elite NBA Hall of Fame class of 09? I'm going to say it's obvious who was going to get in. you got to put in Michael Jordan in his yep. first year of eligibility, not to mention John Stockton. And how about Hakeem the Drill? And it's an amazing class. It really is. NBA. I mean, this is really like our generation of guys. I mean, we actually got to grow up and see the, the full careers, that the, got to see these guys in their entirety play their whole careers. And uh, growing up, you watched Jordan and Robinson and Stockton go head to head a lot. Stockton and Jordan being in the finals, and and it's good to see that all three of these guys who had lengthy and very successful NBA careers are going in the hall at the same time in the same. Oh game. yeah, the Admiral was amazing to watch, and MJ as well. I mean, it, it's just spectacular. That's a great, just a great class altogether. Next email is from Chris. Did the Masters pan out the way you guys thought it would? Not really. I thought Tiger was going to make a, a full comeback in the final round on Sunday. But once I realized that that wasn't going to happen, I thought that Perry was going to be able to hold off Cabrera for sure. After all, Perry had gone 22 consecutive holes without a bogey. I thought he was going to be the oldest Masters champ in history. Oh, yeah. It, again, exactly what you said. I was definitely pulling for Tiger to come back. But after the second round, I pretty much knew that he didn't yeah. have a, a really good shot. But then even Phil Mickelson made a good, good run at it as well. It was very interesting to watch. But, yeah, Kenny Perry threw that one away to Cabrera. It was unreal. I've never seen anyone give it away that easily before. Next email is from Porter. It says, Brian and Ryan, what were your favorite arguments during three and out? Ryan, what were yours? Well, I really enjoyed the role play we did where I was Peter Gammons and, and you were Woody Page. I mean, that was a lot of fun. But basically, anything involving baseball is really a lot of fun for us because I think we get most passionate about these debates. So I really enjoyed the Paul Hulse and Howard debate that we had because oh, that yeah. got a little heated and we had a lot of fun with that one. Yeah, I, that was actually my number one topic, I would say. But I also enjoyed the Kobe-LeBron debate of MVP. And then also T.O. and the Cowboys. Just to throw one of each sport in there. Those were probably my favorite. And they have come recently. So in all the, all the different topics we've had in three and out, there have been too many to name that, that are on top of my list. But those stand out this year. Next email is from Chase. How much tragedy can baseball take at once? First Adden Hart, then Callis. Well, you know, I'll add one more to the list. How about Mark Fidrich, the bird? It, it's very, very, I, I, don't even, I don't even want to use the word dramatic and tragic. But it really is. It, it was really sad to see all those guys go at once. Unfortunately, it comes in bunches, but hopefully we've seen the last of it for quite a while. It was sad that Mark Fidrich died of suffocation. They found him underneath the truck that he was working on. He was just in his early 50s. And then, you know, Callis you can almost deal with because he was older anyways, not in the greatest health of all of them. Mm -hmm. But the Adden Hart, we've hit on that in the last show. That was just absolutely tragic and very horrifying. It makes it tough because, you know, a lot of times when, when people get older, I mean, you can kind of prepare yourself mentally for that. But the thing is, is that all three have really just died unexpectedly. Sure, sure Callis was, was older, but I mean, he really wasn't really suffering from any health conditions. He was getting ready for a game. And, and I mean, these people just pass away unexpectedly. And that's just what the, that's what's tragic about it. When, and when you put the time frame together, especially with Adden Hart and Callis, reminded me identically of Daryl Kyle and then Jack Buck passing away for the Cardinals. Almost mm -hmm. the same time frame, you had a player, a pitcher, and then a broadcaster go down, a, a legendary voice. It was very horrifying, yeah. actually. Next email is from Beth. So ESPN talked about the price of baseball game tickets rising. Have you noticed this, and what do you think? Well, I read an article about this the other day uh, on ESPN.com, actually, where they examined what smaller market teams like the Pirates are doing in, in situations like this. And it basically said that the economy strikes different cities in different ways. R for Pittsburgh, I mean, the article said that it really didn't strike it too hard. So the Pirates really haven't really done much. They haven't really raised ticket prices. So I haven't really seen anything yet. I haven't been to a game yet this season. But at the new Yankee Stadium, I mean, they're definitely raising ticket prices there. It's not uncommon to see people spending a grand on a seat. So. Oh, yeah, especially there. It's the big stage in New York. I didn't see that report that ESPN had mentioned, but I, I don't doubt it. Um, again, you mentioned the economy. But there, are, there have also been, similarly, many teams that have freeze ticket prices. I know that's what my 
Cardinals have done, and I actually appreciated that. A lot of teams that underperformed in the last couple of years to appease the fans, although they really probably should raise the prices to keep up with the economy. Some, some franchises out there are, are um, I guess, respect their fans enough to freeze those prices so that you know, it's more affordable for a family. Next email is from Ren. Ryan, please explain how the Pens made the playoffs. Well, you hear this so many times where it's not about the best team. It's about the team playing the best hockey at the right time. And the Pens did exactly that. They really gelled at the right time. They waited till the end of the season. Sure, they returned to Sergei Gonchar, the, ac the acquisition, getting Chris Kunitz in that deal. And the new head coach, they were all contributing factors to their late success. But um, it, it's great to see, and hopefully the Pens can make a run at it. Yeah, I guess uh, it, it's very controversial or unexpected, but I guess maybe the spark was firing Michelle Terry, and yeah, I guess... It seems from that point that everything really turned around. Yeah, it, it made me look really bad on this show because that prediction totally went in your favor. <laughs> that was exactly what they needed. I'm going to go ahead and I wanted to get your perspective. I'm going to throw out my predictions for the Stanley Cup, and you tell me what you think. I think in the Eastern Conference, the Bruins defeat the, pin, the Pins, and then in the Western Conference, Blackhawks defeat the Sharks, and then in the Stanley Cup Finals, I got the Blackhawks be, de defeating the Bruins. Uh, I think the Bruins are going to get to the Stanley Cup. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that the Bruins are going to win the Stanley Cup, though they've had some trouble in the playoffs the past couple of years. I think the Sharks are going to win their first ever Stanley Cup this season. Yeah, it could happen. Our final email ever on 3 and Out comes from Drew. On average, how much time do each of you spend researching for any given segment? What would you say? Uh, well, it, it really depends on, on the topic, and it really depends on what we're talking about in that, in that segment. I know basketball often takes me a lot more time to research just because I'm not as knowledgeable on um, basketball as I am uh, with baseball and football. But um, it really just depends. Um, usually two hours a show, sometimes three, but it basically just depends on what you're talking about. I was going to say the exact same thing. It always depends on the topic. Whereas Ryan's forte is not so much basketball, my forte is definitely not hockey. And I think we've done a golf segment somewhere in the past as well. And anytime we do some abstract topics, it, it does involve me about two, three hours of research. When it comes to stuff like Albert Pujols, I mean, that takes maybe 30 minutes of research because I already know most of it. It's just a matter of writing down the exact statistics to get those right. But everything else is good to go. Now it's time for our gutter ball. Gutter ball, our final gutter ball on three and out. 18 and one fourth minute that a man spent in 230 degree heat to win the World Sauna Championship in Finland. I mean, you can't really say much about that. I mean, there's a competition for everything these days. And I mean, it's not really like it's impressive. I mean, the guy probably blacked out in the process, but. Yeah, I mean, you could easily die in those kind of conditions, but I imagine he lost a good deal of weight and uh, probably was sweating pretty profusely when he walked out of there, I would say. I agree. Well, we've nearly closed the door on three and out, but there still remains one final segment. We'll be back right after this. Boom, strike. Right to it.